Man, it's a beautiful day out, ain't it, Mike? Brian, it's a gorgeous day. It's too nice to be working out. We shouldn't be here. Holy crap, we gotta get our trucks calibrated. Hello, my name is Brian Pickworth, City of Farmington Hills, Michigan, DPW. Today's task is to calibrate a pre-wet and an anti-ace unit using a Rex Roth CS550. To my right is Jeff Strong from Bosch Rex Roth. He's going to help us out with the technical side of things. And to my left is Mike Delph, City of Farmington Hills, DPW in Michigan. To get started, make sure you wear your PPE. Definitely wear a pair of safety glasses. I would highly suggest you wearing a pair of rubber gloves. You'll be messing with a lot of liquids today. Check all your connections, your tires, all your hydraulic and electrical hookups, and make sure your pre-wet tanks are full of a liquid, whether it's water, liquid brine, calcium chloride, whatever you're gonna use to pre-wet. So the next step is have your operator get into the cab of the truck, start the truck up, let the truck warm up to normal operating temperature, set the RPMs to 1000 for the calibration test, power up the Rex Roth unit, let it go through its cycle, and then we will move it to the back of the truck for the next step. So the next step will be go through your auto null procedure through your Rex Roth controller. In this enclosure right here is your power pump enclosure. It has a hydraulic motor pumping in a, a liquid pump and a flow meter. From there, your liquid goes to either your pre-wet nozzle at your spinner or a slurry bar in the bottom of your V-box such as this piece of equipment. For convenience, in the main line that goes to the pre-wet, we put a quick coupler, banjo quick coupler in here. Take that off, attach another quick coupler to a hose to a catch container. A graduated catch container is best so you can readily read the gallons that you're catching. If you have a simple five gallon bucket, that's fine too. You might just need multiple buckets. Okay, so the next step, I'm gonna have Jeff Strong from Bosch Rex Roth walk you through the auto null process. Thank you, Brian. As Brian said, I am Jeff Strong with Bosch Rex Roth. We are ready to do the uh, catch test calibration itself. You will need a USB key that is provided with the CS550. That goes into the USB port. Once you plug it in, give it a couple seconds to recognize. Then you push the lock button now it'll load us into the actual program mode. Now we're in the standard program mode. We have our several different uh, option screens on the side. The one we want to use to do the calibration, we go down to the hydraulic valve. And then we have our options across the top to what we want to calibrate. For this, we are doing the pre-wet calibration. We touch the pre-wet tab. So we select our pre-wet tab to get into the pre-wet mode. Now since our system is equipped with a hydraulic flow or a liquid flow meter and a separate valve section in the hydraulic uh, valve, we will be running in what we call V-flow, which means variable flow, meaning we're able to control the flow through a uh, dedicated valve section and works in conjunction with our flow meter. So once we are in V-flow and verify that, we can do our auto null procedure. Touch the auto null, we'll run for about 90 seconds or so, and then it'll find the upper and lower operating range of the hydraulic valve section.
once the auto null is complete, it'll set our minimum and maximum null values for us. So we, we know when the valve is ready to operate and when it is maxed out. Now one step I like to do to go back and just verify on our low end we're good. So if we just touch on the minimum, we can watch our max flow here and just verify that we do have flow meter uh, turning back there. So I just ramp it up a little bit until we start seeing a max flow come in on the display screen here. And I lower it down until it's triggering usually between one and two. That way we know we can reach the low end of uh, the customer's requirements. Once you get it triggering between around one, two, go ahead and touch your minimum. That'll bring it back to a stop. Then we can move on to our true catch test. Okay, so after you're done with the auto null process and you got that all dialed in, you want to do a pre-wet liquid catch test. I've got a smaller graduated container here. Um, I believe we're going to ask it for five, five gallons over three minutes. So I'll have, the con I'll have the operator turn on the controller and we'll go through the process. We're going to go over the calibration of the pre-wet material uh, with the Rexross CS550 spreader control. We want to verify what the truck is actually putting out. The number we're looking for is the pulses per gallon here. And we have a default uh, number in here now or a pre-programmed number in here now. So we're going to move to the catch test and we'll see how close that number actually is. During the catch test, we can select the rate that we want to simulate, um, how many gallons per ton. For this test, we're going to do 10 gallons a ton. We're going to simulate a speed of 20 mile an hour. And we're going to run that for 90 seconds. If we ran it for 180 seconds, that would simulate a full mile. But we're just going to simulate for our test purposes here a half a mile, which in our uh, gallons per ton, we should come out with five gallons in our bucket. We have a bent arrow key here that we must press to enter. We've entered our 10 gallons at 20 mile an hour for 90 seconds. We push catch test one more time. Just a note, we have a stop button on here. That stop is only an e-stop if you need to shut it down immediately. Um, but then to recalibrate, you'll have to start back over. So you see the seconds counting down. We'll see the gallons that it's reading here start populating shortly. So after our time is done, we have a screen that pops up and asks us how much we actually put into the bucket. It reported that it did just over four gallons, but our bucket shows that we did five. So I will touch on my box here, bring up our keypad, touch in my five gallons, press the enter button, and select catch test one more time to come up with our new pulses per gallon. We ended up with 1,456 pulses per gallon on this truck. Brought us right in line, and we know we put out 10 gallons per ton. Now that we've completed the alto null portion of the liquid calibration test and the liquid pre-wet calibration portion of the test, we're going to move on to the anti-ice portion. Just a note. The auto null procedure is the same for the pre-wet and the anti-ice portion. So if you notice at the back of our anti-icing liquid trailer, we also uh, adapted a quick coupler banjo fitting to our center hose barb. It's a lot easier to do that than to try to catch all the liquid coming out of the spray bar with all the hose barbs. So we connected that and you also want to make sure you get a big enough container to catch all the liquid when you're doing the calibration test. And again, it's, it's, uh, it's graduated and it's marked out very well. A really important thing to remember as well is the flow meter on the back of the trailer unit. Um, 
different manufacturers have them in different spots. This, ex, this flow meter here actually has a, a tag on it equipped with all the, the pertinent data. Um, you might want to take a picture of that when you first get your flow meter in or ride it down somewhere because eventually that's going to get worn off with weather. The important thing is here to get your spec number off of that flow meter and make sure you input it into the Rexroth computer so it will calibrate correctly. Now we're going to move on to the computer portion of the anti-ice calibration catch test. So once we have completed our pre-wet calibration, now we can move on to calibrating the anti-ice. With this vehicle, we're running multiple functions together, so we're running liquid plus mode. But we do the same thing as we did in the pre-wet as far as an auto null goes. But in the mode for this, we have three booms. So we have a left, center, and right boom. For our tests, we're only going to be running with the center boom, though. So you do your auto null process the same way. It'll ramp up, find its high point, slow down, find its low point. And then uh, you can go back and manually check your minimum and make sure you're where you need to be. So once the auto null is done, you go to your catch test like we did in our pre-wet. Here we're going to simulate how many gallons per mile we want to put down. For this test, we're going to do 15 gallons per lane mile. So we'll plug in 15, press our enter. We're going to simulate 20 mile an hour again. Go 20, press our enter. Our last is our 90 seconds. To simulate a half a mile. So at the end of this test, we should be putting out seven and a half gallons approximately. We press enter. Hit catch test one more time to start our clock. Now it is running. Once again, the stop is only an emergency stop. If you hit stop, you will have to start the calibration process all over again. And after our 90 seconds is gone, we look at how much liquid do we have, how much it dispersed. Okay, Jeff, it looks like seven gallons we collected in the catch test. We came out with about seven gallons. Thank you, Brian. We enter seven in, press the enter button, hit catch test one more time. And we're right on track. It was calibrated just fine right at our, our 72 pulses per gallon. Once that is complete, you're done with calibrating your pre-wet and your anti-ice now. You can exit out of program mode, back to normal operation mode, and you're ready to uh, go out and plow the roads. In conclusion, as part of our winter maintenance best practices, we calibrate our trucks at the beginning of each snow season and recalibrate if you have a major issue like a hydraulic pump or a hose, something in the system that changes drastically, you need to recalibrate your system. I'd like to thank Jeff Strong from Bosch Rexroth for helping us out today and Mike Delph from the City of Farmington Hills DPW. At the end of this video, we'll have all of our information on there if you need to contact us. Thank you. Man, Mike, that wasn't too bad. It was pretty easy, eh? All right, we better get back at it.